Well, good morning and welcome to United in Christ Lutheran Church's digital web space. Thank you for being here with us in worship today. Uh, we're going to be getting started here in just about a minute or two, but we are so glad you are here to gather with us uh, as we are met by the one who provides us with, with enough, enough for today. Thank you. Thank you for being here and worship with us this morning. We'll talk to you after worship. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to United in Christ Lutheran Church. Thank you for being here in worship with us today. As we gather together as God's people of faith among the masses to be met by the one who, who takes what little we bring and makes it enough. Enough for all who gather near, who gather close. Thank you. Thank you for being here to be met by that with us in worship today. Uh, just a couple of announcements before we get started with worship today. First and foremost, uh, apologies. When I arrived to the worship building this morning, uh, I saw that the air conditioning is in recovery mode. I don't know what recovery means, aside from the fact that something must have gone wrong for it to recover from. So to all of my property guys and AC guys who are here in worship this morning, take a look after worship. I would be much uh, appreciated, as I think all of us would. But uh, if you can find yourself close to a window where we can get a cross breeze going, that's the best I've got for you this morning. But thank you for your patience as we work to figure that one out in the week ahead. Uh, as we look ahead, though, is what, what's that, really? You want me to move you closer to the window? Let me just go ahead and lift this sucker for you. Uh, but if that's not enough of a project, it's good timing, uh, because I am excited to announce that after this past week and after our last tally, we have officially completed the fundraising portion of our landscaping campaign. Uh, yeah, this is most excellent. Uh, the full project of $20,000 has been raised, which means that in the next month and a half or so, uh, as soon as our property guys can get to it with the landscapers, 
we're going to be redoing the entire entryway leading up to the building. So thank you all, good and faithful servants, for helping get us there along the way. Uh, keep your eyes peeled ahead for one of the work days that will be made available. We're going to do some good old uh, ripping out of railroad ties and shrubbery uh, with all sorts of implements of destruction along the way. Uh, so keep your eyes peeled for that date ahead uh, so we can get the project going. Uh, things a little closer and more uh, coming up sooner. Um, next Sunday, August 15th, uh, we'll be having our annual Blessing of Backpacks service. Uh, so if you are a student who is getting ready to go back to school, or, or a worker going ready to go back to the office, or, or if you've got a briefcase, or, or a laptop bag, whatever it is, bring your bags with you next Sunday as we gather for that blessing as we re-enter the school year ahead. Uh, as well, we will continue to collect school supplies up through next Sunday that will all then be donated to the Milton Area School District. Uh, a lot of supplies have already come in. Terry's got quite a number of piles in the office stacking high. Uh, we'll bring those all up here to the sanctuary next Sunday morning. Uh, so please know we will continue doing that through next Sunday before we send them out later in the week. Uh, go ahead and mark your calendars ahead as well for Sunday, August 29th, where we'll have our last of our outdoor worship services for the summer. Uh, we'll be gathering over here at Kelly Crossroads at the new Township Center, uh, the new pavilion set up there at the community building. I don't have an address for that, but it's right out back. I think the address is in the bulletin or in the newsletter. It is uh, also on the website on the calendar. Also on the website and on the calendar. So go ahead and click on those and it should re integrate right into Google Maps. It'll tell you right how to get there, but it's about two minutes that way from here. Uh, so mark your calendars. That's uh, Sunday, August 29th at 10 a.m. Uh, I think I maybe have one or two other announcements, but do you have any announcements to share with us as we continue or begin worship this morning, rather? Yeah, Mark. Time to get in tune. We are uh, doing our annual pan and bean soup again this year. So starting September 16th, which is a Thursday night, we'll be doing prep work Friday. The next day we'll be doing the kettles for here at the church. Box of soup's going to be $5 for everybody here at Uh, we can see. Sure looking around, see what everybody else is charging, you know, <laughs> just to get a feel for where we need to be. But uh, it's a good fundraiser for us. I don't think we've determined where that money's going yet this year, but I'm sure we'll come up with a good cause for it. So the sign-up sheets are down on the wall. You, Mark. It's all hands on deck for hammer and bean season. Uh, and I think there's like a half dozen clipboards downstairs in the fellowship hall. It takes all the supplies to fill all them kettles. Uh, and we'll look forward to putting those funds all to good use. Not a penny of it stays with us. It all continues right on back out into the community and into the world. Thank you. Thanks for that coordination there, Mark. Uh, any other announcements before we begin with worship this morning? Uh, then just finally, uh, a word of thanks. Uh, none of them are here, but a thanks to all of the staff and the director who came down from Camp Mount Luther last Sunday to lead us in worship here. Uh, I was able to enjoy a Sunday off with Kelsey at home, so thank you uh, for affording us that opportunity. Uh, but we are grateful for uh, all of the camp staff who, as of this past Friday, have officially completed their term of call with Camp Mount Luther. So please do continue to keep Lucas, our sponsored camp person, in prayer uh, as he as is heading back to Texas, or recently just arrived back in Texas, uh, but all of the camp staff as well as they prepare to return to school or to new job opportunities. Uh, please hold them in your prayers ahead as they transition out of this very fulfilling summer for them. I think that's enough. Huh? Thank you. Thank you for being here gathered with us for worship today. As we begin worship, then, we do so with our prelude, followed by the confession and forgiveness. But for now, I ask simply that you remain seated. That we take this time to center ourselves for worship. That we might breathe in the presence of the Holy Spirit here and in this place. So that as we leave this place, then, we might do so with newfound joy and hope to continue seeking God and serving God in all that we do. Thank you for being here in worship.
Please rise in spirit or body. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help, help us. us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. And through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen. Let's join together in singing our opening hymn, All Who Hunger, as found printed on page four of your bulletin. to spare. Free us, Jesus, from the pursuit of food that does not satisfy. Sing for joy, people of God. God gathers up the pieces of our lives that nothing may be lost. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing for your word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your Son to be the true bread of heaven and share this bread with all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
first reading today is from Ephesians chapter 3, 14 through 21. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his Holy Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and life and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we all can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Would you please rise for Christ's presence in the reading of the gospel. This is the Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus went to the other sea, the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. And Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now, the, the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. But Philip answered him, six months of wages would not be enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? And Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now, there was a great deal of grass in that place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then, Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So he gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. But when they rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, it is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. That is time I'd like to invite forward any young folks present in worship this morning for a special time together up front. Come on up. Here we go. Excellent. Oh, I'm so glad you guys are here in the church today. Thank you for being here. This is excellent. Thank you, guys. Good morning. Good morning. How are we doing? We're going up. Oh, we're going down. That's all right. Maybe we'll, oh, we're all going down. Looks like we're just doing children's sermon on the floor like this today. 
today. Now, I understand you guys are getting ready to, 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 some of us are getting ready to go back to school in a couple of weeks. Are you guys feeling ready for school? Uh-oh. That does not sound promising, does it? Are you like going to school? Are you ready to get started again soon? Yeah, yes, some of us. Well, I have a question. When I was in school about young guys' age, I was being taught all of my numbers and, and how to count higher and higher. Oh, this is a good distraction right up here. Somebody's already trying to count all the lollipops. <laughs> and that's it, okay? Now, I have a question for you. Have you guys learned all your numbers yet? I learned it so Yeah? Yeah, you just, what's the highest number you've learned to count to so far? A hundred? Any? I can count, but I didn't count to hundred and nine school by ten. You counted to a hundred in school by ten? Oh, you counted to 109, but just not in school. So I think that still counts, though. What do you think? I think you think you counted to 100? Yeah, 100 is a pretty good number to count to, isn't it? That's a big number, isn't it? I know. Yeah, no, 100. Yeah, no, no, yeah, 100. Right, that's a big number. What's your big number? 1,000. 1,000? Wow, that's a big number. I don't even think I've counted that high before. Well, I tell you what, in our story this morning, that we heard about Jesus today, Jesus is gathered together with a big number of people. Can you guess how big a number of people it was? What, what do you think, Emmy? You think 100,000? Okay, well, that was a bigger number than I was going to say, so maybe... I do. Can you count it to me after church today? Yes! Excellent! That's what I like to hear. In this story, though, Jesus was together with, would you believe, 5,000 people. How many people do you think are out there right now? 47 is pretty darn close! That's very impressive. My number, when I counted just a little bit ago, I think it's a little over 50 people. But 5,000 people? Yeah. That's like 100 of these rooms all together. Can you imagine that many people? Have you ever seen that many people before? No. no. That's more people than lived in my hometown. <laughs> it's a very pretty dress, and I'm sure all 5,000 people would love to see that pretty dress, right? You can count 100. All right, we're, everybody's going to show me their count skills after church today. This is going to be fun. We're going to do it outside. And we might be there a while by the sound of it. But today, today we remember this really cool moment when 5,000 people were together. And Jesus, you know what Jesus wanted to do for all those people? He wanted to give them lunch. Now, how much food do you think it would take to feed 5,000 people? Food, 5,000 food. Yeah, yeah, that's about right. Now, but here's the thing. When Jesus tried to find food to feed them all, guess how much they actually had? They had five pieces of bread and two fish. Do you think five pieces of bread and two fish is enough to feed 5,000 people? I need a lot of fish. No, you need a lot of fish, right? I don't even think five pieces of bread and two fish is enough to feed all of these people. What did you have last night? Subway, eat fresh. And if it was a tuna soap, then it was far more church oriented than even just for today. I love Subway too. So maybe it's a lot like Jesus going to Subway to feed 5,000 people. But here's the thing I really like peppers. I really like peppers too. We're off the rails today, Jim. Holy smoke. Let's see if we can do this. Guess what is the name of the game? You just had a birthday at your house. Did 5,000 people come to celebrate? Yeah, I was yeah. My dad and my mom just walked in. Yeah. Oh, and a lot of people need a lot of food, right? 
And in our story today, and in our story today, Jesus takes even that little bit of food, the couple of Subway sandwiches, the five breads, the two fishes, and he feeds all of the people. See, the story reminds us that then when we need, when we find that we might be a little hungry, Jesus can help us. And Jesus provides for us when we're not sure that we have enough. And then Jesus, Jesus gives us enough so that we can share with everyone else so that they might know that they have enough and that they are enough. Now, Jesus does all of this because Jesus promises to love each and every one of us and to fill us up even better than a Subway sandwich, even better than five loaves of bread and two fish, even better than birthday cake. Jesus has promises to give us what we need and promise loving us always and forever. I want to see your one more number right after church. How's that sound? Oh, excellent. Thank you. So, the next time, the next time you see some bread, or some fish, or a Subway sandwich, or you count to a high number, or you some birthday stuff, can you remember? Can you remember how much Jesus loves each and every one of you and wants you to share that with everyone so that there's enough to go around? Can you remember that? Yeah. Cool. I know, I really want that way too, now, Wade. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> well, there's two things we should do before we head back to our seats, and maybe a third if we're going to run the subway after worship. Well, what do you think they are? <laughs> yes, we're going to dip our fingers right after we say a prayer and get a lollipop. That's exactly right. So let's fold our hands and bow our heads, because that helps us concentrate when we pray. Dear God, we give you so much thanks for giving us the things we need in life. We give you thanks for the gifts of high numbers and for the gifts of bread and fish and subway too. But God, most especially, we thank you for sending to us your son, Jesus, so that no matter how many people are around, we might know that there's enough to share in you. For we pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Woo! All right, kids. We can go ahead and get one of these lollipops before we head back to our seats today. Thank you for being here in worship. And then we can go dip our hands in the font and remember that there's always enough. Excellent. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Are you going to share with your family? That's perfect. Excellent. Thank you, thank you. Wait, do you want one there? I know, I always know you don't. I will bring Subway bread next week for you, okay, my dude? No, I want a whole Subway. You want a whole Subway? <laughs> The, the whole subway. We're going to bring the whole subway next week. You want that on, a, what is that, Italian urban cheese there, Wade? Five out. The whole congregation next week. Okay, so next week I'm going to add that to the announcements. We're going to do a potluck at Subway right after worship. Unless you all want to go there today. How fun would that be? Swoop in on the subway workers and be like, hey, we tip well. Did the tip so well? Well, I might already know the answer to part of this question, at least, it seems. Uh, but I know a lot of y'all have been doing a lot of traveling this summer. You've been out and about. I know a lot of us are making up for last summer's lack of journeys. Uh, and, and as we've been heading out, I've got a question for you. What's your road trip snack of choice? Yeah? You know, w w when you're packing up the car to go down to the shore, when you're packing up to go to the campground, or, or when you're already on the road and, and you're looking for something to suffer, what's... What's your road trip snack of choice? Goldfish. Oh, Emmy, what's your road trip snack? Goldfish. Goldfish, oh yeah. And I tell you what, they're not only the snack that smiles back, they're the gift that keeps on giving as you find them in the seat cushions later, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, PJ says thumbs up. Goldfish, that's a good road trip snack, yeah. What's it? Pretzels, excellent. I love a good pretzel. I'll go, I'll go ham on some pretzels. Gummy bear. So see, Kathy's introducing the sweet connotations. Yeah, no, that's good. Gummy bears for the car ride. What else? What other, what other road trip snacks we got? Peanut M&M's. Peanut M&M's. See, now I always had to be careful with those. If I held on to them a little too long, despite that card outer candy shell, they got a little ooey ooey in the back of the car, and then mom's windows started to look a little painted by the end of the road trip. Huh? Peanut M&M's. I like it. What are our other go-to road trip snacks? Recreation. Licorice, another sweet tooth over here. I like it. You'd fit in well with Kels. Kels is a uh, Sour Patch Kids. 
I know, we gotta pick up a pack of Sour Patch Kids or peach rings anytime we go. Yeah. And, and here's the thing though, none of these ever replace actually stopping for a meal, right? They are just the, the thing that gets us where we're going. For me, for me, the road trip snack always played itself out when my dad would come to pick me up from college. Uh, there is this sheet in Dillsburg, Pennsylvania, that is exactly, almost exactly halfway between Washington, D.C. and where my parents live in the Lehigh Valley. And so every time my dad came to pick me up, there was the requisite stop, like a beacon of hope of bread blooming from the hillside at the sheets there in Dillsburg, where I would, without fail, go to pick up a pack of Snyder's honey mustard and onion pretzels and a code red Mountain Dew. I know, Trudy's shaking her head, like a, like a mom who said, you can't have that for breakfast. I'm gonna stand here in defiance just to uh, thank you for that, Trudy. <laughs> and it tastes the same. Old Faithful. It tastes like sitting in the front seat of my dad's Kia Spectrum, just driving our way back from college, trying to hold it till we made it home or till the sheets bloomed again. And, and the pretzels, of course, were kind of the gift that kept on giving too. And, and I'm sure to my then girlfriend at the time, she really appreciated when I need a whole group of these uh, breath enhancing pretzels by the time I made it home to visit with her after not seeing her for a couple of weeks. You know what I'm saying? Cheers, my dear. They're not sour patch kids, but man, they'll stick with you more than the goldfish will. Every time, every stop demanded that we get the road trip snack. Maybe for you it is the chocolate, maybe it's the M&M's, maybe it's the licorice, maybe, maybe you wait and see the golden arches so you can get something a little more substantial. But, but there is something borderline sacramental to these staples, isn't there? Again, it really does feel like being in the front seat of my dad's Spectra with all of my belongings packed into the back of the car. It has a way of, of, of transporting us. But here's the thing, for as much as I love these pretzels, and a good code red every once in a while, they don't make for a good dinner. Mm. Peanut M&Ms don't make for a good dinner. Pretzels don't fill in for a good dinner. Goldfish don't fill in for a good dinner. Licorice and Sour Patch Kids surely don't fill in for a good dinner, even if there's gummy bears along the way. These are not the substantial good. Yet, and yet they, they seem to be enough. They seem to get the job done for the purposes that they serve. They seem to fulfill a very specific role, even if it is to just tide us over for the time. And, and when we are, feel like we are getting a little bit of hangry and reaching for the Snickers to satisfy, Maybe they fulfill the role of sustenance just, just enough along the way. So we catch up with Jesus in his journey this morning. It's apparently time for him and his disciples and the crowds who are gathered around to make their stop at the sheep. It's time that they, they pull over on the side of the road to find some extra nourishment to complete their journey together. They're in need of substance. Now, obviously, there are no golden arches making their way over the Galilean countryside. They can't stop at a Mickey D's for a quick fix of a meal. So they had to figure out something else. And so Jesus, of course, poses the question to Philip, where, pray tell, are we going to get enough to feed the masses? Because the masses were gathered. 5,000 people gathered along the hillside there around Jesus. Jesus wants to know how in the heck they're going to feed them. I mean, the notion's preposterous in and of itself. Philip says as much in his response. Lord, not, not even six months of wages would be enough to give everyone just a little bit of bread. There's no way they could possibly feed all of those who were gathered on such short notice. Problems compounded then when the only food they seem to be able to come up with comes from a young boy who happened to have some bread and some fish. Five loaves 
and two fish is all they've got in their inventory for the masses who are gathered around. And yet, and yet, taking that pittance of an offering, taking what little was gathered and at hand, Jesus himself breaks it. And he takes it to his disciples, to all of the masses gathered around issuing each enough, apparently, to satisfy their fill. By his own hand, Jesus provides for all who are gathered there. And when everyone has had their fill, and they go to collect their leftovers, it's measured not merely in the pieces and loaves and fish, but in baskets full. And as this Jesus has distributed now, there is, is more than enough at hand. Watching this play out, the, the, the masses who have seen this miraculous endeavor take place, they now want to make this prophet into their king. I, I mean, you can understand why, right? They want to take this Jesus away and, and make him the power that they long for in their lives because, because it's an impressive story after all. The roadblock that he overcomes in his provision for those who are gathered around is nothing short of miraculous. So of course, they'd want to empower him more. Of course, they'd want that sort of king to work for them. Of course, they'd want this Jesus to keep it up, to keep it going, to keep the provisions along the way. And it really is a lot to take in, especially especially when you consider what the roadblocks were in that journey. I mean, aside from the obvious that Philip points out to Jesus that, that even six months of wages wouldn't be enough to feed all of those who are gathered around, it, it, there's this additional layer of, of, of unsatisfying sustenance when you consider just what the food was in the first place. When John names these five pieces of bread and these two fish as being enough for the masses who are gathered, it's not even good. Bread. Not even good fit. The words he uses are, are, are unique words in John's gospel here to talk about five barley loaves, the, the cheapest of all the grains out there, and, and two pieces of like dried fish. It's it's jerky. <laughs> okay. When the boy rolls up with the food he has to offer, it's just road trip. The stuff you pick up to get you through the journey. It's not enough to satisfy or fill a crowd. It's just enough to get you through the day to the next stop. Yet, and yet in the hands of this Messiah, the poor man's traveling food becomes plenty. It becomes enough for all who are gathered not an exorbitant meal by any stretch of the imagination. It's, it's no four-course endeavor. It's not even a land flowing with milk and honey, as was promised to God's people. It's just real food satisfying real hunger. You know, maybe, and maybe that's the reminder that we need. That in this provision from this Messiah, there is simply enough. As we gather together as God's people of faith, as we work and live among this community of faith, as we bring the gifts that we have to offer, the barley loaves and dried up pieces of fish, the morsels of our own offerings, we might have the same question that Philip asks. What are these uh, among the needs of so many? I mean, what are a couple boxes of food in a world that's going hungry? What are a couple of diapers every month in a world where children continue to go and be? What are a couple of meals distributed on a monthly basis for those living in isolation? What are a couple of school supplies for those living in a world where, where daily needs of the struggle to be met? Well, we gather with Jesus on the hillside today. We gather in a world founded in hunger and 
striving for something more? The answer might be they are enough. They are enough for a hungry world. In the hands of this Messiah, they become the gifts of abundance. What might feel like morsels to us become extraordinary in the hands of the one who has more to offer. See, see this, this story, this passage, this offering, it is nothing short of good news. It is deliverance for God's people. It, it's no mistake that John points out that this episode takes place at the Passover where the people remember their own deliverance out of the land of Egypt. And it's no mistake that the language used reflects the language we will hear again shortly, that Jesus, taking bread, gives thanks, breaks it, and gives it to those who are gathered. In this sacrament of poor man's bread and dried up fish, there is enough. In a world where we seem to struggle to find even morsels to offer back out into it, Jesus names it and takes it as enough. And, and while we might want to rush to, to find ways to leverage this Messiah to our own agendas, there is a reminder here in John's Gospel that Jesus doesn't work like that. As the people wanted to rush away and make him their king, we hear that Jesus steps away from the crowds and out into the boats. And then, and then later, out on the sea, as the winds kick up and the sea roars, as the disciples want to take Jesus for themselves and harbor him, he suddenly changes the scenery on them as well. They find themselves in a new place. See, there can be no restraining of this Messiah. This Messiah, who makes enough, does so in God's terms according to this Messiah's agenda. While we might wish for more from this king, while we might wish for the larger feast to set before the world, while we might wish for lucrative ways of leveraging out again, here we are reminded that in this Jesus, there is simply enough. And that is enough for the masses. It's enough for the disciples. It's enough for me. It's enough for you. And this God, this one who provides plenty out of seeming nothing, you have been claimed and found to be enough. So may you share it. May enough be enough. May you show the world that it too is enough. It's thanks be to God for a feeding such as this. Thanks be to God for a meal such as this. Thanks be to God for enough. rise and join together in singing our hymn of the day, Break Now the Bread of Life. It's found printed on page 7 of your bulletin.
faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the Church, the world, and all of creation. We pray for the church, bless the ministries of our neighboring congregations, empower churches throughout the world, and encourage missionaries who accompany global neighbors. Kindle in us a spirit of collaboration that all people may know your loving works. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for creation. Send rain to the lands experiencing drought and come to the aid of those endangering sweltering heat. Nurture wheat and barley crops grown for the nourishment of your people and conserve aquatic habitats and fish populations. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for those who govern, cast out arrogance, selfishness, and corruption, and instruct those who lead to practice compassion and humility. Inspire them with a vision of the common good and a commitment to ensure that all who hunger are fed. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for those bowed down by heavy burdens, those who are unemployed or underemployed, those unable to find affordable housing, those without health insurance. Console those who grieve and hear the cries of all who call to you for healing, especially those we now need. For those who were named aloud, those we felt in our heart, and for all who have no one to name them, hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for this assembly. Deepen our resolve to use what we have to serve those in need. When we worry that we do not have enough resources for ministry, assure us our abundance is enough. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks for those who have died. As you sustain them through all their days, so dwell in our hearts that we may have the power to comprehend with all the saints the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O oh God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we would normally take up this morning's offering, but please note that we continue to place our offering plates at all of the entrances to the sanctuary here. You can place your envelopes there on your way into or out of worship this morning. You can always scan the QR code in the bulletin to be taken to our digital offering plate and place your offering at any time during the week. Now let us offer the fullness, or at least the morsels of ourselves that are enough, as we gather around the table here this morning. And so, the Lord be with you. And I'll come with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy. We should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name, saying, Alleluia, come Holy Spirit. Holy God, you alone are holy, you alone are God. The universe declares your praise, beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We praise you, Lord God. Generations bless your faithfulness. 
through the water, by night and day, uh, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future, we bless you. We give you thanks for your dear son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. Thank you, O God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, or that which was enough. He gave thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant, the new promise in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering within this meal among your people throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your spirit, in your church without end. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Here at United in Christ, we understand that this invitation to communion is Christ's own invitation. Unless all who are gathered here are welcomed at this table. We invite you to come forward in the center aisle, making two lines, and to come forward and to receive the bread and to receive the wine and return to our seats by the side aisles. For the wine, we invite you to take the plastic cups here on the table and place the empty cups in the plastic bins at the end of each table as we return to the sides here. I said two lines. I meant one line. I will be the only one giving out bread, and then we'll go to our seats by the, with two uh, wine distribution stations. Uh, but come, taste, and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Please be seated. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
please rise and stir in our body. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in Christ's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts, you satisfy the hunger still around us, and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Let's join together in singing our sending hymn, Praise and Thanksgiving, as found on page 12 of your bulletins. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.